Hey guys, Jay here again with Tap and Turn Gaming, and welcome back to another Commander 2014 unboxing video. This video will be taking a look at the mono green Commander deck uh, called Guided by Nature with 15 brand new magic cards inside. But the uh, mono green Planeswalker that we get in this deck is Fraley's Lanawar's Fury. She looks pretty cool. Um, so let's flip this around, take a look at the back side here. Not going to read this, it's the same on every box, but you know, we get a nice little picture of Frey Elise there. Then we have uh, some images of some of the cards that are in the deck as a little teaser, I suppose. But let's read this little paragraph here about the deck guided by nature. Frey Elise, Land of War's Fury, protects the forest and the elves who dwell, who dwell there, and they protect her in return. This Planeswalker Commander summons legions of loyal elves to her side and unleashes the full might of the natural world upon her enemies. Pretty cool sounding. Then you got your uh, listing here of all the other decks. Uh, that's the same on all of them. And then also the contents. We have the 100 card Commander deck, a foil oversized Commander card, as you see there on the front. Uh, ten double-sided token cards, a deck storage box, deck strategy insert, and a rules reference card. So, let's uh, crack this bad boy open and see what Guided by Nature has to offer us. <clears throat> I'm really liking all these decks so far, guys. Uh, so far... I've cracked open the white deck and the black deck, so now we're doing the green deck, but so far I am really liking what I see with these decks. So here we have the deck storage box and the deck is inside, guided by nature. Here we have the oversized Freyalise Lanowar's Fury card. So we're going to take a look at her now. So here she is. Freyalise Lanawar's Fury. She's a five cost green planeswalker. Comes into play with three loyalty counters. And her first ability is, oops, sorry. First ability is plus two. Put a one one green elf druid creature token onto the battlefield with tap it to add green to your mana pool. So basically she plus twos to make elvish mystics. Then her minus two ability is to destroy target artifact or enchantment. That's pretty awesome. Lots of artifacts and enchantments do some pretty dirty things in Commander, so this Planeswalker will allow you to destroy them flat out. Then her last ability is minus six, draw a card for each green creature you control. That can potentially be bananas. So, you know, if you have, you know, 15 green creatures on the board, minus six, draw 15 cards. So in a deck like that, you'll probably want to play a Reliquary Tower, but nonetheless, that last ability is very potent. And then as uh, as the other two, you know, with the Planeswalkers from this set, the little last kind of passive ability, I suppose, on the bottom there, as you can see, for Elise Lanowar's Fury can be your commander. So all these Planeswalkers from these decks can be the commander of your deck. So... That is Freyalise Lanowar's Fury. Let's just stick her back here. Alright, so let's open up the deck storage box. Here we have oh, here we have our deck. And the first thing we see here is a tree folk token. And then we have our deck strategy insert and our rules reference card. Not really going to take a look at these, you know, they're kind of there if you're new to the game or really want to read upon, you know, Wizard's personal strategy on how they think you should play this deck. But let's take a look at what everybody wants to see, the contents of the deck. So let's crack this open and take a look at what this deck has to offer us. So, first and foremost, there we have the Tree Folk token again. Uh, all these tokens are double-sided, so I'm just going to take a look at the first, you know, first couple. We got a Tree Folk, then a Wolf, and we got an Elf Druid, and a Beast. We got an Elemental, 
and another beast you know, and then just the rest I'm just gonna rip through the rest of these tokens are tokens gargoyle token that's interesting okay now we're at the land base as all the other ones have seemed to have been lots of basic land so this has lots of basic forests just gonna quickly rip through those okay so now we're into the actual deck now and the first card we have is a crystal vein taps for a color so you can tap it and sack it to get two colors to your mana pool uh, evolving wilds that's kind of interesting I mean every basic land in here is all the same so it's not like you really need to filter your land so that's kind of interesting that they put that in uh, ghost quarter blows up lands and the controller of the land that got blown up can search for a basic haunted fengraf uh, taps for a color so you can pay three and tap it and sacrifice it to return a creature card at random from your graveyard to your hand we have haven good haven wood sorry haven wood battleground comes to play tapped taps for a green or you can tap it and sack it to get two green okay so here we have we're past the lands now here we have uh, the actual standard regular size of Freya Elise Lanowar's Fury you already took a look at her here we have a new legendary creature Titania Protector of Argoth she's a 5 cost 5-3 five, legendary elemental creature when she enters the battlefield, return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Then whenever a land you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a 5-3 green elemental creature token onto the battlefield. So that's a pretty interesting card. Um, so basically, whenever lands, any of your lands get destroyed, you get a 5-3 creature to replace it. And then when she comes into play, you can get a land card back from your graveyard. So she's... She's interesting. And we have Azuri Renegade Leader. Pretty good, uh, solid legendary elf if you want to do uh, tribal elves. He's pretty sweet. I would imagine we're going to see a lot of elves in this deck. So here we have we have a uh, Jiraga Warcaller. Uh, just going to stop and really talk about the new stuff. Uh, anything that I know is a reprint, I'll just you know say what it is and go on to the next card here we have a sylvan safekeeper i'm not sure if this is new or reprinted but it's a one cost one one where you can sacrifice a land target creature you control gain shroud until end of turn so that's pretty cool works well with titania elvish arch druid pumps all your elves and he taps her green immaculate magistrate really good elf creature if you're playing tribal elves uh, wren's run pack master from the Lorwyn block. We have Masked Admirers. We have a Wolfbriar Elemental. He brings friends with him if you multi kick him. Here we have Creeper Hulk. I've never seen this card before, so it might be a new card. 5 cost 5 5 with Trample. You can pay 2 until end of turn. Target creature you control has base power and toughness 5 5 and gains Trample. That's pretty solid. We have a Silk Lash Spider, a Grave Sifter, a 6 cost 5, 7. When he enters the battlefield, each player chooses a creature type and returns any number of cards of that type from his or her graveyard to his or her hand. So that's pretty cool. You know, if you're playing Tribal Elves, he will get you back a lot of Elves to your hand. Here we have a Primordial Sage. Draws you cards when you play creatures. Rampaging Baloths gets you four fours when you landfall. Soul of the Harvest, um, the kind of you know twin brother of Harvester of Souls. Instead of drawing cards when things die, you draw cards when things enter the battlefield. We have a Thunderfoot Baloth, six cost five five with Trample with the new ability Lieutenant, which I think is very flavorful. I really like it. Uh, basically, it'll do something cool if you control your commander and this card at the same time on the board. But what it says is as long as you control your commander, Thunderfoot Bayloth gets plus two, plus two, and other creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and have trample. That's very, very nice. 
We have a Siege Behemoth, 7 cost 7-4 seven, with Hexproof. As long as Sage Behemoth is attacking for each creature you control, you may have that creature assign its combat damage as though it weren't blocked. That is a game ender right there. So, you know, if you're generating a big army of elves and you're going to swing in, if you have this guy on the board, you know, all your creatures, as long as this guy's attacking, all your creatures can just deal their damage straight to your opponent as though they weren't blocked if they did happen to get blocked. So that, that's a game-ending card right there. Pretty cool. Every Tornado Elemental, 7 cost 6-6. Six, six. When it enters the battlefield, it deals 6 damage to each creature with flying. That's pretty cool. And you may have it assign its combat damage as though it weren't blocked. So that's pretty cool. One of my favorite green creatures, Terastodon. Solid non-creature permanent removal. We have Lifeblood Hydra. Three green and X. It has Trample and enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters. And when it dies, you gain life and draw cards equal to its power. Pretty awesome. Beastmaster Ascension. Really solid green enchantment. Uh, gives all your creatures plus five, plus five if this has seven or more quest counters on it. And you get counters on it by simply attacking with creatures. So if you attack with seven creatures all at once, this will instantly prime it up to seven counters and all your creatures get plus five, plus five. But, you know, you could incrementally get the counters on there and, you know, get this primed and just make your creatures huge and mean and nasty. We have Song of the Dryads, a three-cost green aura. Uh, where you can enchant any permanent, and enchanted permanent is a colorless forest land. So this essentially turns the permanent that you enchant into a dryad arbor. So that's pretty cool. Here we have a wolf caller's howl, four cost green enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, put X, two two green wolf creature tokens onto the battlefield, where X is the number of your opponents with four or more cards in hand. So it's kind of a situational card, but if you're playing a multiplayer game, you're, you know, probably gonna get at least a couple of wolves uh, every upkeep. So it's a pretty cool card. Fresh meat, another reprint, but you get three three green beasts for each creature card. Those put in your graveyard that turn. Whirlwind, four cost green sorcery, destroy all creatures with flying. Overwhelming stampede, pretty cool. Collective Unconscious, 6 cost green sorcery, draw a card for each creature you control. That could potentially draw you a ton of cards. Here we have Wave of the Vitriol, a 7 cost green sorcery. Each player sacrifices all artifacts, enchantments, and non-basic lands he or she controls. For each land sacrificed this way, its controller may search his or her library for a basic land card and put it on the battlefield tapped. Each player who sac uh, who searched his or her library rather this turn uh, this way shuffles it. So basically, it'll nuke all artifacts, enchantments, and non-basic lands. And then for every non-basic land that gets blown up, its controller gets to search for a basic to replace it. So it's a pretty cool card. Uh, you know, mass board wipe for artifacts and enchantments, and you can get rid of all your opponent's non-basic lands. Yeah, it blows up yours too. But if, you know, you're playing Titania, uh, that works very well with her. So that's pretty cool. We have Praetor's Council. It's from the Scars of Mirrodin block. Return all cards from your graveyard to your hand and exile this, and then you have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. That's pretty cool. Sylvan Offering, another new card. One green and X. Choose an opponent. You and that player each put an XX green tree folk creature token onto the battlefield. Then again, choose an opponent. You and that player each put X, 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature tokens onto the battlefield. So that's pretty cool. Another uh, one of those political cards. Definitely it would be a lot better, you know, <clears throat> if it's a, a big multiplayer game. You know, if you want to make friends with somebody at the table and, you know, team up and take other people out. It's a cool card to play. Uh, Emerald Medallion, two-cost artifact, lowers the cost of your green spells by one colus. Seer's Sundial, pretty cool. Predator Flagship, that's a very old card. Uh, five, I mean, this is a reprint, but a five-cost uh, legendary artifact. Pay two colus, target creature gains flying, or pay five and tap it to destroy target creature with flying. We have Gargoyle Castle. 
taps for a color, so you can pay five and tap it and sacrifice it to get a 3-4 gargoyle artifact creature token flying. Or in Reef the Vastwood, it's from Zendikar. Taps are green, or you can tap it to put a plus one plus one counter on each green creature that entered the battlefield this turn. That's really cool. Jungle Basin. Um, you know, another one uh, kind of like those Ravnica bounce lands. Taps for a uh, Colas and a green. Is another Myriad Landscape. Comes to play tapped. It taps for a Colas, or you can pay two and tap it. And sacrifice it, search your library for up to two basic land cards, a chair of land type, put them on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. I really like that card. Slippery Karst, Cycle Land, Terramorphic Expanse, Tranquil Thicket, another Cycling Land, there's an Elvish Mystic, Elvish Sky Sweeper, we're into the commons and uncommons now, mostly reprints here, Essence Warden, a Green Soul Warden, Llanowar Elves, Elvish Visionary, Priest of Titania, 2 cost 1-1, one, one. tap it to add green your mana pool for each elf on the battlefield. So that will also give you green mana if your opponents are playing elves as well, so that's pretty sweet. Sylvan Ranger, Thornweld Archer, 2, co uh, two cost 2-1 two, with reach and death touch, that's pretty cool. Wellwisher, tap it to gain a life for each elf on the battlefield, that's nice. Farhaven Elf. Lots of elves here. Imperius Perfect, one of my favorite elves. Reclamation Sage, he's really good. Timber Watch Elf, uh, three cost one, two, tap it. Target creature gets plus X, plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of elves on the battlefield. Again, really nice. Titania is chosen, three cost one, one, wherever a player casts a green spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on him. It's pretty cool. We have Wood Elves. Drove of Elves, lots of Elves there. Lissalana Huntmaster, another reprint. Harrow, pretty solid uh, land acceleration. Three cost, green instant. You get to sacrifice a land in addition to paying its cost, but you search your library for up to two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield, not tapped, then shuffle your library. And that works well with uh, Titania. You cast this to ramp into more land. Land hit your graveyard. You get a 5-3 dude to replace it. It's pretty cool. Works well with her. Hunting Triad. Get you Elve Tokens. Overrun. Give your creatures plus 3, plus 3, and trample. Grim Flowering. Draw a card for each creature card in your graveyard. It's pretty nice. Desert Twister. 6 costs. Green Sorcery. Destroy target permanent. That's pretty nice. Uh, a green spell that destroys any permanent. Yeah, it costs six, but in green, that's pretty good. Another uh, Skull Clamp. Skull Clamp is very, very nice. I uh, like, I think we saw this in the white deck as well. Pretty heavily played card in Commander, so the fact that they did new art for it is really cool. The fact that they put them in these decks even better, because, you know, it's a very popular card in Commander. Soul Ring, naturally. Moss Diamond, Taps are Green, comes to play Tapped. Swiftfoot Boots, probably in all the decks. Commander Sphere is in all the decks. Assault Suit, saw this in the white deck, but it's a four cost equipment with three to equip. Equip creature gets plus two, plus two, has haste, can't attack you or a planeswalker you control, and can't be sacrificed. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, you may have that player gain control of equipped creature until end of turn. If you do, untap it. That's a really cool card. It could make for some interesting interactions. So you suit this up on one of your big nasty creatures, send it at somebody, and then on the next player's turn, you could give them the creature that this is equipped to, and they can go to town with it at somebody. And then you get it back at end of turn, and then you can keep passing the creature around the table and having people just beat face with it. So it's a pretty interesting card. I like it. And then we have a... Lore Seeker's Stone, 6 cost artifact, pay 3 and tap it, draw 3 cards, and it costs 1 more to activate for each card in your hand. So that concludes the Guided by Nature Commander 2014 deck. Pretty solid stuff in it. Um, overall pretty pleased with this one. Uh, I do like Fraley's, I think she's pretty cool. Also I'd like to point out that now that I actually really take a look at the art, for those of you that watch The Walking Dead, is that a female version of the governor with the eye patch? <laughs>
I just noticed that now, so... But yeah, uh, anyways, so as far as the creatures that were in this deck that could potentially be the commander of your deck, let's just take a quick look back at those. Let me just find them here. Here we have Azuri Renegade Leader. He's a very good choice if you're playing Tribal Elves. He allows you to pay a green to regenerate another target elf, and then he can give all your elves overrun, so that's pretty solid. Uh, Titania, she herself is not an elf, but some of the cards in this deck do synergize very well with her, like Harrow. Uh, there was a card in here that allowed you to sacrifice lands and do stuff. She's very interesting. Um, I mean, I'm kind of just, you know, when I see cards like this, you know, that just kind of seem like they could potentially be bananas if you built a deck around them. It just makes me start brewing things in my head to try to think of a deck <laughs> to build around that card. But I, I think she's pretty cool. Uh, when she comes in, you get a land back to your graveyard, to, straight to the battlefield. And then whenever a land you control goes to the graveyard, you get a 5-3 dude to replace it. So that, that's pretty cool. I like her. And obviously, Fraylis, the governor. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, she can be your commander or Titania or Azuri. Those are the three cards in this deck that could potentially be the commander for you uh, of this particular deck. But yeah, that pretty much wraps it up, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, throw out a thumbs up and a, a uh, comment. We love to hear your comments and suggestions. And if you're not currently subscribed to our channel, hit that subscribe button. We really do appreciate it. Uh, we really love making these videos for you guys, you know, unboxings, deck techs, reviews, you know, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, again, hope you guys enjoyed this unboxing video of the Guided by Nature deck for uh, Commander 2014. This has been Jay with Tap and Turn Gaming. Again, throw it a, a like and a comment and hit that subscribe button for us. We really do appreciate it. And stay tuned to our channel for the red commander deck and the blue commander deck uh, we have those two left to unbox so stay tuned to our channel for that thanks a lot for watching